We're at NJIT in Newark, where the Green Party is holding its annual national meeting, looking ahead to the off-year elections in November. Now, Jersey is one of only two states with a governor's race. The other one is Virginia. So the Greens are doing a little low-level politicking here. Now, Jersey is a tough state for a third-party candidate because the media ads are expensive and because of the party line balloting. So Jersey, however, is a little different this year. There's a lot of voter anger and angst over the budget deadline lock and the government shutdown. The question is, are the Greens going to be able to translate that possibly into a little bit of a voter shift into their column come November? Now, we put that question earlier today to the Greens gubernatorial candidate, Seth Copperdale, and to their 2016 presidential candidate, Jill Stein. Let's talk Jersey first, where we had a budget uh, deadlock and government shutdown. Obviously, people are very exasperated. Now, does the dif dysfunction make it easier for you, perhaps, to convince people to give you their vote? I found before this last weekend's debacle that people were already ready to give me their vote. Um, they're tired of the two-party duopoly. They're tired of Wall Street and Trenton being so in bed together that you can't tell the difference between one and the other. But I do have to say that shaking hands was uh, en entertaining this past week with people as person after person said, are you going to get Christie out of there? And I said, well, he's gone anyway. But they just said, good. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think people are ready to be done with a two-party duopoly, and I'm glad to be offering a third-party choice, or as I call it, the new first-party choice. Let's talk about the upcoming election now. You've got 120 seats that are going to be up in the New Jersey legislature, but I think we've got in the Green Party one state senate candidate, four assembly candidates, a couple freeholder candidates, one school board candidate. Why is it so difficult to get people to run on a third party on the green ballot? Yeah, unfortunately, this is how the current system works, where uh, two political parties who are funded by business as usual have all sorts of advantage to make it a very steep uphill battle. Um, for example, Seth has to raise four times as much money as I had to raise in order to qualify. As a presidential candidate, I had to raise $100,000. he has got to raise over $400,000 just to be admitted into the debate uh, and uh, to have to qualify for matching funds. Mm -hmm. I mean, this really says that that this is a democracy that uh, you have to buy your way into. And it's not just the expense, though. In Jersey, there's also the party line politics that plays a very dominant role in s seeing who gets on the ballot. Does that make it even more difficult for a third party candidate? I really think the thing that makes it difficult is we just we haven't seen a strong gubernatorial candidate um, in a while outside the two-party duopoly. And if we can change that this year, I believe there will start to be a wellspring of candidates that arise in New Jersey because a lot of people are tired of this. We're not only excited that this candidate, my, my candidacy, will lead uh, to uh, a governor in Trenton, but that in a very short time we'll have other assembly members and senators and, and school board members and, and everyone else starting to rise up here as well. Because you're right, it's about being local. There seems to be a lot of energy, though. Um, we had a 13% turnout, voter turnout in the primary in Jersey, which is, believe it or not, a lot. Um, and there seems to be a lot of energy focused on the fact that the governor's a lame duck. It's wide open. How do you uh, attract people's attention? We are attracting people's attention. I know that it's very hard when the other candidate can put in $20 million of his own money to um, fund his own campaign. But the way we are getting attention is we're going to people who aren't usually reached. 61% of the people in New Jersey did not come out to vote the last time a gubernatorial election took place. 39% is, um, you know, Chris Christie got more than half of the, or he, he got the majority of the 39%. Mm -hmm. And um, we believe that that 61% is a untapped resource of people who deserve to have a voice. We are the party of the people. We believe the people will rise up. I think there's going to be a voter turnout that's going to make both of the parties in the duopoly completely nervous because we're going to win with, with that as our mantra, that we're going to start at the bottom, the last or first, and a wellspring from below can transform everyone in the state. A lot of people look at voting for a third party candidate as wasting their vote, as throwing it away. And as a matter of fact, you're still being called a spoiler for what happened in November. Uh, so how do you convince people that that's not the case? Well, as it happens, almost half of voters stayed home 
because they didn't want to vote for the two most disliked, untrusted candidates in our history that were being rammed down their throats. 75% of voters were screaming for open debates so they could find out who else they could vote for. And in fact, the majority of Donald Trump's voters were not voting for him. They were actually voting against what they perceived as the only other choice. So it's just not true that Greens took votes away from the mainstream candidates or from Hillary Clinton. Stein officially endorsed Copperdale for governor today. This meeting is going to run through Sunday here at NJIT. I'm Brenda Flanagan in Newark for NJTV News. Back to you.